Hi my friends, it's Pat Sloan here. Today is the day that we will kick off a quilt drive for Ukraine. I am so happy to be able to finally bring to you some options for making quilts and sending them so they will get to the people of Ukraine. It's like, ah, oh, just, you know, it's heartbreaking that we actually have to be doing this. But I know from day one, not only did you want to continue doing the fundraising, which we are now over $200,000. Thank you. You are you are so incredible. You've made quilts to uh, to remind yourself and in support of Ukraine. And now we will take that pattern of mine, or you can do another pattern, <laughs> and make a full quilt that can be donated. So I have done some research on organizations. So what we're going to do here in this video today is I'm going to tell you a couple other things first. Then I'll talk about the two organizations that I will recommend uh, for quilts. And I'll give you a little background on them so you understand what they are and what they're about. But first, let me tell you about this gorgeous t-shirt. <laughs> so my friend Kate Spain is doing a fundraising using these t-shirts that she designed. She is an incredible artist. Uh, you may have seen her fabric for Moda Fabric, but she also does her, her artwork goes on paper products and dishes and all kinds of other things out in the universe. Uh, and she designed this sunflower t-shirt. Now, all the money that is made after she pays for the t-shirts and the printing and the taxes and all that, whatever's left is going to the World uh, Central Kitchen run by Chef uh, Jose Andreas. And if you've not heard of the World uh, Central Kitchen, they are feeding people all over the world that are in need, usually in disaster zones, in this case, a war zone. Uh, so they are on the ground feeding people in different parts of the world. Um, a super great organization. He has restaurants here in Washington, D.C. area. Uh, just a dynamic man, a generous man. Uh, and Kate is also uh, quite a generous person. She does a lot of fundraising and is uh, just a remarkable friend. So if you like t-shirts, <laughs> you can wear one of these also. Uh, so I'm wearing the large. So I thought you would get to see what it looks like. So this is the large. Okay, the other thing is the Fat Quarter Shop. For those who love cross stitch, they have a free sunflower cross stitch. So here's a picture of it. Uh, so if you want to do a little cross stitch, maybe you want to make it into a little pin or something you put on a bag uh, to show solidarity and support of the people of Ukraine. You can also, you know, do your donation. You could do a cross stitch in support. Um, patterns it's it's a really easy little pattern mine's in black and white but the pattern is in color <clears throat> and she has this you know this it's in this cute little basket here which uh, she has a tutorial and I show you that on my website today uh, link to the tutorial so you can learn how to make that little basket to put it on okay for this fundraiser, the big thing has been our UNICEF uh, fundraising drive and will continue to be. So as you make things, uh, if you are just joining, you can do your donation if you want to through UNICEF, which I put up because I wanted a place to be able to support what was going on and decided with my friends at Orifil uh, who are working with me that <clears throat> UNICEF would be a wonderful organization to select as our charity of choice for this. Um, we have over 200,000 now from 21 countries. It's just mind blowing. Let's get to the quilts <clears throat> because I really wanted places that were dependable, that I knew what was going on, that they knew what they were doing. That was my criteria. I have done a lot with charity things on the internet for many, many years, and so have a lot of experience knowing where and what uh, kind of pitfalls happen with these kinds of things. And so I'm uh, going to be sharing locations that are already doing this that you will just send your quilts to. So you're not coming to me, I'm not running it or organizing it, I'm just supporting them and sharing their efforts because I think they're excellent options. Okay, let's get to number one. <laughs> <laughs> Our friend Carla Walker has um, wrote me when I did that charity list a little while back and so I contacted her about this uh, and she works with the Lutheran World Relief which is a big relief organization, charity organization uh, that has been around for a like, hundred years. Carla has been doing work with them for over 20 years uh, and she works with them primarily as a volunteer in the quilt area because the LWR, Lutheran World Relief, has a quilt um, <clears throat> portion of this relief effort. 
So they are all set up to handle quilts. They do it all the time. They have a process. They know how it works. They know how to get things to people. It is mind blowing. Uh, so Carla sent me some pictures and I'm going to walk through them with you here. Carla so very kindly sent me a group of photos of the Maryland facility and the things that she has done there and told me about them so that I could share with you. And this first one is just the outside of the facility, which is in New Windsor, Maryland. It's nothing fancy, it's super basic, it's a warehouse. But she said this also is a warehouse for another organization called Serve uh, Fair Trade Products. Now let's go inside. Typical warehouse, lots of things all the way up to the ceiling. Uh, you know, lots of containers. Now they uh, run with all volunteers. Uh, there are only two paid employees. Uh, so all the volunteers are reviewing things, repacking, you know, doing all the labor that needs to be done in order to accept goods. Goods which are all kinds of products, including quilts. Uh, so like the people who do the, that are paid employees, they're the ones that'll run the bailing machines and they'll do the shrink wrapping and all those kinds of things. So when you send your quilt, in a box, this is where it comes. This is the mail room. Holy cow, look at that. They've been in existence a long time. They've been doing this a long time. They have a process and it works really well. Uh, but the, the amount of quilts coming in is just crazy. They can accept and process 10,000 quilts per day, 10,000. That's opening the box, bailing it, and placing it on a pallet. I mean, reviewing them, all this other stuff. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So your box goes from there and they open them up and lay all the quilts out on the table so they can review them, be sure they're the right size, uh, be sure there's no problems with them, uh, just see what's going on, and then get them ready to be put into, uh, you know, condensed down. So let me show you this picture. This one is powerful. These are the bales, bales of quilts. Each unit you see there, that white bale, is 50 to 60 quilts. So they shrink wrap them, they get them pressed down. Then on a pallet, they stack up, they can stack up to 30 of these, and that is 2,000 quilts. And what you're looking at in this picture is 50,000 quilts. It's like, oh my goodness, I can't even process what that is. That is so much. And like I said, they've been doing this a long time, so they have it really well organized. Okay, let's take a look at the last one. And these trailers are where those bales go. They will go and be packed into those trailers and the truckers will take them down to the port. They will put that trailer, they'll lift it up, take the whole trailer and put it onto a ship. And once it goes on the ship, then it will sail to wherever it needs to go with all of the supplies. Um, <clears throat> the, the really interesting thing she said is they also send tires because these are being put on, you know, they have to be, have we, they have to have um, tires to be sure that on both ends, you know, here and there, wherever they're going, that in case they have flats or whatever needs repaired. So they also send tires along with their shipments. Uh, right now there is a shipment that has been sent to Dubai and it is being distributed to uh, needy people right now. Um, it's just an incredible thing, an incredible thing. So thank you, Carla, for sharing these photos with all of us. Uh, they are a powerful statement to what quilters do. So see, see, isn't that like, wow, they know what they're doing. They have it down to a science. Uh, they are well organized. At some point I will go and take a tour. I just can't wait. I think it'll be super exciting to see it. Okay, the other option is an entirely different uh, thing. <laughs> it is with Becky Peterson of Quilted Twins. Becky in one half of Quilted Twins, her twin sister Rachel is the other half. Becky and her husband Mike live in Poland and they live and work there. They have been there a long time. And she has done relief work, charity work. They have a small nonprofit, she and her husband, that they work the charity work under. And she's been doing quilt charity for a very long time with her own quilts and people send her things and then she makes quilts from that. And, you know, so a lot of it she's doing herself, but people have also sent her quilts. Um, being in Poland, uh, they immediately went into action when this happened to start doing uh, relief efforts to get goods, <clears throat> you know, food, clothing, um, you know, bedding, whatever, to the refugees as they were coming across the border into Poland. Now people are actually, they have, are hosting refugees now in her own town. So they still are doing work to send things 
out of the town to where it's needed, where the people are, but there's also the people in town that they're supporting. So this is a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Um, and she, she is amazing. So Becky sent me um, a little, tiny little clip, plus uh, I'm going to walk you through some of what she's doing here. So let's watch that. There's two posts I'm going to link you to at the site so that you can go and read the whole thing. But in her town now, there are actually two facilities that have Ukrainian refugees, which are primarily women and children. Uh, and one takes 90 people and the other, I think, has a few less people. And she says there's a lot of things they need, just like underwear and uh, like the plastic shoes so they can take a shower and their you know, feet can stay healthy. Um, you know, they don't have food, so you know, everybody, all the food has to be gathered up and brought in, and that's one of the things Becky is doing, is going out with the donations that have come in to her organization, is to uh, go out and buy food. So here's some of the guys who are loading up the car, but they need, you know, the cheese, Nutella, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. Let me just go ahead and show you this quick little 30 second video she sent. Okay, here's a video of, of some of the stuff we're trying to send in a van on Monday. Day. It's um, toilet paper, women's products, some cookies, some pasta, uh, flour, uh, oats, salt, rice, more flour, baking powder, oil, yeast, dry milk. There's some canned meat and um, some fun stuff like Nutella and sugar. You know, one of the nice things is you can just tell Becky's heart is immense because she said when she goes to shop, you know, she has to buy a lot of stuff for these, there's a lot of people and she doesn't want to wipe out the shelves of a particular product. So she has to go to a lot of different stores because she doesn't want the, the Polish people when they come in to shop at their grocery store to not find like any peanut butter because she's bought all of it. So she goes around and buys it from all different stores. So that takes a lot of time. And uh, I have this one photo here. You can see how they've loaded up their uh, one car with donations. These are for town and they're, they're sending them to refugees in other towns, you know, over towards the, the border with Ukraine. Uh, now, I want to show you some pictures of her quilt a relief part, you know, what she does, because she has a great blog post, which I have linked you to, that shows how she goes through and gets the quilts packaged up to be given to people, because she's basically making a whole thing with the pillow, and it uh, looks like sometimes she can put a fleece blanket with the quilt and a pillowcase, uh, and then these all are wrapped in a specific way and rolled up and put into duffel bags. So you can see this whole pile of duffel bags is actually the quilt packages that go up so that when you send your quilt and if you want to make a pillowcase to go with it, that would be awesome. And if you're sending directly to Becky, this is her process and what she does. And you can go read the whole thing over on her article. Uh, she's doing amazing good work and lots of it. It's taking her, uh, you know, this is like almost like a full-time job. I can't imagine what else she can possibly be doing which, besides helping people right now. It's incredible. So as you can see, basic needs are still primary for the refugees. Um, food, uh, clothing, these are still primary things that need to be done. And Becky's um, donation efforts, the money will goes to buy all these things. Uh, you can read those two posts that I have left you today at the my website, or you can just start following Becky and read whatever she's posting, because she's posting fairly often about what she's doing. But I did the one post I put on the just the refugee stuff and the other about how she packages up the quilts. Okay, so here's the fun part. For those of you all across the world that want to ship um, to Poland, the quilt to, Pol to Becky in Poland, you can. Becky is accepting quilts. Now that means like most of you will be shipping international because very few of you probably live in Poland. Uh, so it'll be an international package that you'll have to send to Becky, but she is willing to accept them and ready to accept them and knows that they, that I'm doing this and they'll be, that they could be coming to her. So here's, here's the details. Now I want to give you, I've written this down on my website as well, but I just want to walk you through a little bit because each of these organizations has something you need to do. Um, that's super important to make this successful because if you don't do this your quilt may not get there and we don't want that to happen. Okay, so for the LD, L, um, WR Lutheran World Relief, they have one very specific thing and that is the size of the quilt. 
So they are working with a 60 by 80 or in the, my, I've gotten their approval that my 63 by 83 quilt is a good size. They have the, the same size quilt because uh, first of all, bundling them up into those big um, bales, they need everything to be the same size so they can be organized and they can see what they're doing and it all flows and works uh, perfectly in their system. Also, they've been doing relief efforts all across the world and they have learned that it's better to come in with a standard size uh, uh, quilt rather than having all these different sizes and then they come into maybe different cultures uh, different um, countries where people might not quite know what to do about all these different sizes and there might be you know like it just might not go well so so they've decided that it just works best if they're all the same size so everybody who's given one if they're giving out 40 everybody gets the same size there's no issue there with you know small or bigger or whatever so that's super important for your quilt to be accepted uh, at the lwr okay for becky becky will take any size quilt um, as she's happy to take baby quilts. She says there's lots of babies, lots of little children. So small quilts, which would be less expensive for you to ship. She says they will find a home. So size of quilt is fine with Becky. For shipping international though, all of you need to be sure that you do the customs form correctly. The customs form has to be that it is a gift and of zero value. Uh, that way she will not be charged any fees when it is delivered to her. And that's the way it works in other countries uh, with through, you know, cross, cross country. Whenever you do something across country, you know, from one country to the other, there's all these customs fees. It happens when things come here too. If it's not done properly, ask me how I know. <laughs> I've had to pay a customs fee uh, on a package coming from another country. Uh, so you don't want to do that because Becky may not be able to accept it if the fee is too high and then it'll have to be returned to you and therefore you will waste your money uh, shipping it. Uh, the quilt will have to go there and come back and not get to the intended place. So if you have never done international shipping before, be sure you understand how that works. And it's also just brilliant that all across the world everybody has a place to send a quilt so you can send them to Becky and she will make sure they get to people and if you would always put in the box that it is for Ukraine uh, for Ukrainian refugees put it in there you could pin it with a safety pin, not a straight pin, a safety pin, you know, to the quilt. You could put a note also on your label. Be sure you write something to the person who will receive it. And then um, Becky said if she's handing the quilt to a person in person, she will translate the message for them or they'll get on their phone and do a translation. Uh, so she said they will read it. And, and uh, that's just heartwarming, isn't it? That you can write a message and it'll actually be read by the person who receives it from you. So I am so happy to be able to offer both of these options to you. I feel very, very comfortable with both of these organizations that when you send your quilt, it will get to somebody. Um, and that is the important part. <sighs> okay. And like I said, it is just sad that we have to be doing this. If you have not made your donation yet to UNICEF or some other organization, um, you know, the UNICEF information is at my website, so you can do that. And uh, that money will just directly be helping people immediately. Um, and I can't wait to see your quilts. I am going to be starting mine, which will be done just like this. I'm going to use the same blue because I have a lot of it. <laughs> this is my Morrison Park blues. I'm going to use my blue and then a bunch of different yellow fabrics. And I'll have to see if what kind of yardage I have from probably be just a plain white background. I think that's what I have most of for yardage. <laughs> so we'll see uh, what that is. So I will start probably cutting up blocks and sharing my process here on the video as I go along. Uh, and then I hope that you will start making a quilt. Of course, you don't have to make one like mine. You can find another pattern. It just, if you're sending to Lutheran World Relief, uh, it does have to be the right size. Also, just if I didn't mention this, um, the uh, Lutheran World Relief quilt part, all the volunteers, which are most volunteers that are there, almost everybody, it's a, it's a non-denominational type um, part of the of the of the organization. So there's all kinds of people and it's just wonderful that that can be the way quilting is. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, it can be for all of us. 
as quilting should be. So I love you, my friend. Mwah. Thank you for being here. Thank you for donating and supporting and quilting uh, and being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.